Good morning. Ooh. Okay. Good morning, intrepid readers. It is Wednesday, the 27th of September, 2017. I just got back from working at my son's classroom. I got to work in both classrooms, which was pretty cool. But now I'm ready for a nap. So let's go over the blog. Let's talk about the video version of the blog from this week that I actually just posted yesterday because I went to Colorado last weekend and that was 24 hours on the road, 12 hours there, 12 hours back for like a two day birthday celebration for my mother's 80th birthday. So I'm pooped. Needless to say, I'm like totally gassed and haven't been doing any good writing or anything productive really yet. So let's start here. Let's try this. A little video version of the blog from last week, which was not really a conundrum or a mystery. It was just about how much fun it is to be scared. See, I got to go. All right, first back the truck up just a little bit. My husband hates scary movies. Uh, my kids are still too young really to watch scary movies. And I love Love, love, love scary movies or scary books. Stephen King is a, is a genius and um, fantastic storyteller. And I've always, some of my friends growing up, my friend Leslie and I, I mean, oh my goodness, we used to go see scary movies all the time. And it was just so much fun. There's something about getting scared. And to, and to a point, and that's what I'll talk about real quick today. So this weekend... What's this? I'm sorry, put that away. This weekend, my friend Sean, you've heard of Sean. He's a writer and an acting teacher, and he's a very, a very excellent friend of mine. And he's helped me with lots of my books, and we kind of have a lot in common. But he is more into scary, like he has more scary movie posters and his whole scary movie studio, theater set up in his house. Basically, he is... He's a master of, of all things scary. So he wanted to go see it with me. And oh, Stephen King, like I said, love it. I love the miniseries, the TV miniseries with Tim Curry. Fantastic. And he said, oh, no, this new one, this is his quote, scared the shit out of me. This is from the king of scary movies, seen everything. He says it. The newest one, it scares the shit out of him, and he wanted to go. So he'd already gone twice before I even got there. But so we went to a theater in Grand Junction called Regal Cinemas and um, just, just loved it. It was so scary and so freaky and so fun. The characters were so fantastic. And so that's the definition. Let's talk about the definition of, for me, what makes a good scary movie. All right. First of all, I think that a good scary movie is about stuff that could never really happen. All right. I don't want to get, I don't want to have a heart attack. I don't want to face my mortality based on seeing scary movies. I want it to be imaginary stuff. Right. So in my world, regardless of how I feel about ghosts or goblins or demons or scary ass clowns, or whatever, those things aren't real. So it's fun. It's like delicious shiver me timbers to watch a movie like that that's about imaginary stuff that can't happen. So that's first quality of scary movies. They, For me, they need to be about stuff that can't really happen. So I can just in, engage my imagination and have a good time with that. All right, second, not too many cheap thrills. Okay, I, boo! I don't really like that. I think that's an unnecessary parlor trick to that scary movie people use. And so it's okay to have a couple. There was one scene in this movie, It, that I wasn't prepared for. Mostly I was. Like I'd seen enough previews and I know his makeup is so creepy and ugh, God, he was awful. He was so scary. Like just the fact that he was this childlike kind of drooling it's hard to describe. He was almost cute before like the multiple teeth came out, almost cute and just creepy. 
just enough off that you're like, ew, right? Ew, it's kind of icky. So not too many cheap thrills, all right? So what do we have? Not too many cheap thrills, um, stuff that's not true, okay? The third thing for me is, it's, I say subtlety, but I'm not really talking subtlety. I just mean like the gore, the, the cutting, seeing innards and, you know, to me that's not really necessary. I, I don't think it's, it doesn't seem to, it doesn't aid my getting scared. It's just kind of annoying. So the example I use in my blog is um, last weekend on Epics, I found the movie My Bloody Valentine, which is from, uh, I don't know, the thing said 90, 81, but I don't think the elite guy's old enough to be, he's younger than I am, so I don't think it was 81, maybe it was 91. But I wanted to watch it because the lead character is Jensen Ackles, who, aka Dean Winchester, who is like one of the top five of my celebrity crushes. So I watched it purely because of of Dean Winchester. But it was, it did not fit my definition of a good scary movie because it was all about the blood and gore and it was real stuff. Like the the, the scary guy was just this serial murderer who favored big metal implements like shovels and pickaxes and, you know, those kinds of things in the middle of people's foreheads or down their gullet or whatever. Gross. Just gross. So, like, the first scene, that's that scary movie scene with the mu with the music and, oh, no, oh, no, something's going to happen. That first scene, this girl gets her face, like, bisected with a shovel. Okay. Yeah, that's not necessary. I'm not... For me, for me, not necessary. So all the saws and all the... All of those movies, to me not good examples of scary movies and this was not a good example of a scary movie either so what i did because i still want to see dean winchester is i just watched the scenes pre scary music when someone's gonna get you know garroted or whatever grossness is gonna come up i just watched dean winchester and then kind of do this throughout the scary movie until i hear the chunk or the <sighs> I don't know, whatever disgusting noise, and then I go back to watching the movie. So that's how I got my fill of Dean, but didn't have to watch any bad, scary movie stuff. All right, so not necessary for the blood and gore disgustingness like that. Now, on it, there was a couple of parts that were a little gross, but uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just so in love with Stephen King and his stuff to begin with. I couldn't, I'm blinded. Maybe that's true. I don't know. But anyway, and then the final thing. All right, so we have it is a um, no cheap thrills, but no frights, no cheap thrills. See, now I can't even remember what my list is. No cheap thrills, um, things that are not real, and no gore, no, you know, like random, unnecessary gratuitous that's the word I'm looking for no gratuitous gore just for the sake of seeing blood and guts although I will admit it's interesting to me as a person who's done makeup who's been an acting teacher before and has done all of that makeup it's interesting to see how extensive they are like they're really good now with the makeup and, and it's the stuff that's the makeup not the CG that I like the best the stuff that's the actual makeup artist creation I think that's good but anyway none of that Okay, and the last thing that I think makes a good scary movie is that there has to be hope. Like the characters, the main characters need to win. Okay, I just, I think that's essential. And that's why, I think that's the reason I like Stephen King so much. I feel like he is a romantic slash optimist slash feminist because Beverly Marsh in it, she kicks ass. She's the only one in the whole movie that is not scared of Pennywise. And she's, she's bitching. I mean, I just, I love her. Strong women, you know. So he's a feminist. He's an optimist. He's a romantic. And uh, all of this is wrapped up in a horror writer. So there has to be hope at the end. This is tough with sequels, right? You can't have too much hope. Because, I mean, you've got you've to set the movie up. You can't end with a satisfying ending. 
with a lot of scary movies because people are setting up for, you know, Nightmare on, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 33, whatever. I don't know. It gets so old. we got to leave it and leave it open for the next one. Now this one, it, we had to leave it open a little bit for the next one because it's it's a, an 1,100-page book. And so they had to split that up. I heard, and you can confirm this if you know the if you know it for a fact. I have heard that there's actually going to be three movies of it. They're going to do a second one that's like background information uh, from the story parts of the 1,100 page book that aren't covered in this first or, or the last one. But to me, that just seems greedy. I just feel like that's greedy. That's like, okay, so it. My understanding is this version of It is the highest grossing R-rated movie ever. And it's only been out like two weeks, right? So ever, that's pretty serious. So, of course, the studios, who are greedy, are going to do three movies instead of two, just to make more money. That's kind of how I felt about The Hobbit, too. I was annoyed at how many they had split it up into. I didn't think they needed to split it up into that many. But, uh, so there needs to be the sequel. I get that for it, but but otherwise, I just like straightforward Crimson Peak. Have you ever seen that? That's a that's a fairly new ghost story. It has the guy from the Avengers that played Loki. I can't remember his name. He was in Crimson Peak. It has maybe Jessica Chastain. I can't remember who the girl is. Someone famous, a girl that I should know her name. But that one is just a straightforward ghost story, and it was scary, and it was it had a beginning, a middle, and an end, and then it, that was it. And that that fit. It didn't have hope, though. <laughs> I guess that was just kind of as if sort of depressing at the end. But uh, I mean, it did a little bit. The main character survived, so that's good. Anyway, so anyway, that's my definition of what makes a scary movie. I love being scared. I love scary movies. I am wholeheartedly recommending. The movie it to anyone who wants to go see it um, because I think it fits all of those elements of what makes a good scary movie and I would like to know what you think it's not really a mystery I love them I think they're great maybe you've got a different view of what makes a scary movie maybe you don't like to be scared at all in which case you might sit through movies looking at the back of the couch the whole time which I do know <coughs> husband I do know somebody who did that the whole Nightmare on Elm Street when, when he was little. So, anyway. Anyway, I would love to know what you think. But until then, until next time, stay mystified.